they pl win. had played Ogre Magi offline. They've done that in the past. They have. They've done a lot of weird stuff. Yep. But they want to, most likely, they yeah. leave their mid for yeah. last pick. And that, that's just the simple what, way to like, set this up. What is straight? Skyrath and Tiny. This is very different. Those were quick picks, too. Like, yep. both teams Ten definitely got what they remain. wanted. Or you don't just pick crazily like that. Five so Skyrath, remain. the biggest things about him, right? Super good, at, like, the best support at level one at harassing anyone out of lane but can fall off super quickly. Like if you die a couple times and you don't get mana boots or soul ring, you fall off super fast. Yeah, you're pretty pretty easily picked off by any sort of kill based heroes. Puck and Tiny both are gonna be able to take you out of the game pretty pretty well. But I mean, whatever, it's a hard fight position. Yeah. It's always gonna be your life. As long as you win the laning phase for your Marana, I guess, or no, more likely your mid, right? Yeah. I, I'm I'm guessing we're gonna see like the first three, they're all gonna go on the, to the top or to the bottom lane, they're gonna go aggressive. Nagamarana, yeah. Skyrath. Nagamarana, Skywrath, put Death Prophet mid and put something else safe. Yeah, I can see that. All right, like Cavs, I mean, the, remember the, the, the thing before they nerfed dying to neutrals? You just pick Skywrath, throw out like seven arcane bolts, and then die to newts. And there was no punishment back then. Yeah. Obviously, there is now. So, what if you like did some sort of weird game changing? Pick up. You did some sort of aggro tri lane mid puck and like an AM or out. Oh, EG's you want an turn to pick. Uh, I, don't know. I know what you're saying. Hey, EG's lineup just feels so weird. Oh, they void Skyrath. They had to see that coming, right? Because most of the carry mids aren't going to be like looking real hot right now. They are going to have such a tough laning phase. They're facing up against a Death Prophet, so you want to go more towards range carries. Mm -hmm. But SF Invoker, like neither one is going to be Ten real happy with the Skyrath Mage Faceless Void. It's such an easy kill combination to yeah. isolate a, a damage heavy remaining. mid hero hmm question i mean you need so, i mean i guess you don't need a bill you don't even really need more physical damage. i mean tiny if you get tiny to the late game he's really all you need so it'd be interesting if evil geniuses goes for another like tempo heavy team fighter puck ruby because it feels like they are missing a lot of damage you have puck to lock people down but with his new coil like unless you like make them scared run away he doesn't do that much damage at level six razor you think right i don't know that'd be too early they need some later yeah i mean i think so too but then all the later game carries are all going to be fairly squishy what about, lone I, what about naked right, I don't know what's going on great <laughs> I'm lost. I'm, I'm, right. I'm gone. So it, I think it is going to be that sort of maybe like aggro tri lane So it's going to be puck middle too, right? Yeah. I, I think it's puck mid and nature's profit is maybe given the 1v1. Yeah. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll assume that. I'm out. I don't, that, know. I, I don't yeah. know. I like DC's draft more, honestly. I do too. I but I, I do think stuff. that... Uh... There I go. I mean, since the tiny pickup, it just... I mean, DC's lineup was a little clunky, but you could see synergy between yeah. the first yeah. two pickups and then the three, four pickups. Now the final pick really helps round everything out. Agreed, but I'm going with EG. I mean, there are EG, evil geniuses. Yeah. You have Sumail, one of the best players for almost two years straight. Universe for the best player one year straight. Arteezy, one of the fan favorites, one of the kings of Dota. Fear, a god on the freaking the mountains it's of good Dota. Good thing we don't have biased and people crit. on the panel. And Crit, one of the best Europeans to ever come to America. I mean, you just got it Adopted all. American. Really, yeah, easily. Time. Honorary. What do you think, Cap? You got to you gotta put out your preference. Uh, I'll just go with Draft. I like DC's Draft more. I think EG will take the series, but I think yeah, that DC has a better Draft as well. So we'll See you on the loser one. side, dumbasses. See ya. Hey! No, that's not what I said. Oh, whatever. Locked in. <laughs> Locked in. All right, thank you for watching this draft. Now go on to watch the actual game with Odie Pixel. Thank you very much, Shiva. Second series of the day here in NA, EG versus DC. It's all going to get very exciting with some drastically different drafts to what we were seeing in the earlier series today as DC coming out with a Skyrath. As I was saying, so this lineup of five heroes that if this goes late, they could arguably become cause. And Evil Genius is with this high active early game to mid game. Some male puck. And I am so excited to see the RTZ Tiny Lumi. Yeah, we'll, we'll talk about the RTZ Tiny in a little bit, but I want to spend a little bit of time talking about DC. So I've seen this actually actual lineup a couple of times because they did play in the Aces ROG Masters, the NA qualifiers. And they did run heroes like the uh, MSS, or sorry, the, the Boba Skyrath. He actually likes the hero quite a bit. Um, he plays the four for the team, but I think he might play the five now that he has the Skyrath. 
And also, they did run the Marana offlane. It looked garbage. Not because MSS played it poorly, but because the hero can't really offlane. Sure. Yeah, sure, you could leap away three times and not die, but the problem with Marana is that you need to get farm on the hero. And I just don't think offlane is the bad. way to go. Let's see if they could get a good matchup for MSS and maybe give him that 1v1 that he desperately needs on the Marana. What is it with this tiny? Look at this aura that Artsy's he has. Yeah, so I think... Does he got one of those weird ass items? Yeah, yeah, he does. Oh, he does. He's got one of the magical... The magical ethereal items. It looks, it looks fancy. He's a fancy boy, Artsy's. He wants to be pretty whilst he's playing the tiny. See if they can get a movement here with this smoke. E.G. The battle begins. Ready to start, start kicking off some action. Oh, point for you on Walter's announcement. Oh, shoot. You've just been telekinesed back into this. They do get the arrow on the ogre, but a point for pulling down low sniper won't keep it alive. E.G. Get the first blood. They turn towards Mason. Mason time work forward. Looks towards Spear. They do get the trade DC. And Mester's having to be careful. RTZ will have the avalanche back up in five seconds. And forcing RTZ back. Yeah, with the riptide. And the right is RTZ getting low. Turn with the avalanche. Arrow's going to be blocked by the pug, but RTZ still goes down. Crit will find MSS with the help. That's the mail. Triple two for two. Is anyone else going to fall? I think Grey is down as well. DC. They will find the third kill. Can they get it? Yes, they can. Mason in with a double kill. Time was forward. But Samael, he gets a double kill as well. He's got another orb. Should be able to get himself out of there as he jumps out. Three for three. Welcome to NA, ladies and gentlemen. Hope you enjoy your stay. We've got some crazy action in the first 45 seconds of the game. Three, three as it stands. Who got the first play? Uh, I know. I there was six kills. The male got the first. The male got the first, and he did get the double. And so, yeah, okay, yes, the male is. Look, he's got double no talisman already. Double no for the lane. That is. That's that's not great for the boy. Over the lane. MSS. It did. Wait, did the kills just don't stop, Lumi. Yeah, they know MSS got the arrow for, at the one, so he didn't have leap. So they threw the garbage ignite on him. And what is going on? EG versus DC. We're gonna have some fun with this one, I can feel. I mean, looking at heroes, we, we know there's gonna be a lot of skirmishing. And that's really the problem for DC, I think, as a whole, as a lineup, is that they're very good early on, but the way they play that event is that, for whatever reason, if they don't have a good early game, they just crumble. They really rely on, on the early game, and they just, they're getting hammered right now. Bottom, they are indeed. Nagasara is sent back to the depths as Jimmy takes the sideline. Bang down by fear. Five for three. And Universe up top, at the moment, he doesn't really care too much about Boba. Boba's expended like his full mana pool. Yeah. Universe is just chilling. He's just hitting too. I think Skyrath is literally oh, one. But he's deep it. He wants to kill Boba. Oh, he's one. Or at least take the rune. It will grab it from in front of him. And Boba's getting nothing out of that. Skyrath is probably one of the worst supports to have against MP. You should just send two trains on Boba and he has nothing. He can't actually do the trains. So mid lane. I gotta say, despite the early double nulls, the male, he's having a trouble hitting the creeps, Lumi. Look at this, 2-2 two, two on the puck, 9 for 6 on Koifa. What do you call him? The best player in the last few years, according to Grand Grant? Wow. Grand Grant, what does he know? The male is struggling. Koifa is dominating this mid lane. I mean, I know Koifa is a great player, but you know, I don't think he's supposed to be... Getting oh, RTZ chucks MSS out of the way as they look to focus down the Naga, RTZ. Out of mana. Try and chase. A bit of a punch onto MSS. He's out. Without the mana though. Pray hard for RTZ to make any sort of active plays. Farming a right down here. 12 for 6 on Tiny. So I'm very curious in terms of how he's going to be playing it. The way that whenever we see Flexley play the hero, they played it pretty much like regular Tiny. You just uh, go 4 4 4 max your, your two nukes. But RTZ at least get the one value point to do Let's see if he's going to level up more. It's going to be very interesting to observe the build. Picking up the, the Wraith Band as well for this lane. Yeah, what's with the Wraith Band? I guess uh, upgrades into Aqua. Gives them the armor as well I as guess, the Yeah, region. it gets, gets you up a little bit on that. Right, but this hero is zero Aji. He has zero Aji the whole game. Like, that, that's the crazy stuff. Oh, geez, he picks up a tree. He's trying to turn around and back into this demon, but the three are drowning and the tree is broken. Artiz has got a run, he's got a high, Telekinesis and Avalanche will buy him some time, in fact, nearly brings down Demon. Demon only just gets himself away, Artiz will stab up, looks to come back in on, some MSS low, we're done, looking for Crip, Crip, trying to get out of this, but jump forward from MSS, one more touch will do it, and they find the kill onto Crip, Artiz now left alone, he'll pick up a tree again, 
about trees, the man in charge of them all turns up. Nature's Profit University in, looking to help out the team. They've managed oh, to trap the MS. Oh, he takes the tree to the face. Oh, it's easy, chucking trees like he chucks toys out of pram. He is leveling up the tree. I see what you did there, by the way. That was good stuff. And now he, he is going to be getting the, uh, the ring of the thingies. I mean, it looks silly, but you gotta keep in mind that he is a zero armor hero playing against this side. Zero, so. zero. But he's doing. He's fine at the farm. Seventeen to seven. This game's getting crazy. Mid lane, how are we seeing? Sumo catch up. Well, we are. That, that's what we're seeing. He's thirteen to ten. He is starting to close that gap, that lead that Koifa had. But we're still standing with the advantage. But Sumo very close behind now. Mid lane, here comes the gang. Silence gonna come through. This is why you pick yep, Skyraft early. Got the net as well to make these sort of movements hugely punishing for Samael. Very little that he can do against that sort of rotation if it comes in unobserved. This is what we love to see. Five minutes in, six for five. The action never ending between these two NA sides. I think this is going to be a pretty normal game considering what we just saw. How <laughs> complex I feel like everyone's going to go for. No! Have you I seen mean, the tiny looming? Normal in terms of the item builds and stuff sure. like that. We're not going to see a Dagon out of time. At least I don't think. Watch you all prove me wrong. But... It's easy. It's the tree. Can I MSF? I mean, the thing with the, the tree grab build early on is that yeah. it's. It helps out your mana pool quite a bit. If you compare it to the mana cost of Avalanche and Pause, you use those abilities quite a bit. Tree Grab allows you to be pretty effective in the lane, and also get the grab pretty effectively. You could use that tree once or twice when you're about to be done with it. Do that mess up the good old toss. Yeah. As we can see, push the wave in as well. Just have to be a little careful with Jimmy coming back to the bottom on Naga. I think moving forward, if we see more tinies, I, I feel like teams are going to start adjusting how to play with tiny. Maybe you start treating him more like a Sven hero where you could stack camps for him. Because I feel like with tree grab, you could clear it quite easily. Absolutely. Ma maybe he can't tank it because he has very low armor, but maybe you bring uh, someone else that can and then like, hide it back and forth a bit. MSS. One actually slightly behind overall in terms of the course all over the map. The universe having a great time at the top. He's 31 and 9. Wallace is out of the lane. But at the same time, Mason is not being slowed down at all. He's getting perfect farm on the faces for it. 34 for 12. He's got that level 6, so Uni does have to be a little careful. He's sort of a plus 1 up top. Could set up for a kill with that Chronosphere. Things. Certainly calming down a little bit since that early bit of a kickoff to the game. It's all about the farm, and so far, so good for, for all cores on this map. And looking at the way that Tiny is playing this month, the tree grab, one thing it also does is really helps them lane against the range heroes, right? Just increase your attack range. Yeah, yes. Paper from the first place. And you can play out these creeps as well for the side pool that was stacked up. Throw immediately. Juicy. So they have a launch. Let's just quick for the loop. Okay, but look at this rotation now. They're bringing Koifa down to the bottom lane with the exorcism. Bulba leads the way. Smoke will be dispelled by Crit. They know what's going on. And EG, they'll start to back up. Getting us easy out of there. Fear could be in trouble. He's pretty beefy. Arrow will connect with the net. They'll surround him. They'll burst down the ogre. Avalanche will not buy enough time or space for Fear to get back to safety. I'm surprised that Sumail didn't make the TP. Has three cards already. That was a fairly long chase that DC did. Maybe they turned it around with a three man I mean, on the plus, though, this is, you know, exit. So, so the Death Prophet moving to the bottom lane. If he doesn't find the tower. It's sort of a wasted movement. It's given a lot of space to Samael in that mid lane, and this is this is going to slow down quite for in reaction to Samael unless they can get this tower pushed down with the first use of the exorcism. Still holding on to it for now. Now Samael, indeed, he is coming in. He wants to join the action. They get the beautiful nice. toss back onto quite for into the telekinesis. No escape for this Death Prophet as quite for gets burned down. Look at Coil, he's looking for a little bit more. Coil's going to miss. He's going to be off the mount. Demon continues to retreat. <laughs> Try for the blind tree toss. Won't quite get him and off that. Demon will escape. Dream for a whiff, but overall, it's good news for EG. They put a stop to the push being attempted by Quaker's Death Prophet, and in fact, 
But the numbers down here, they could look to put a bit of pressure on the tier one tower of TC. Yeah, they don't have the siege unit, but you know, they got the best siege unit, right? Yeah, they have the good nice damage to the tree. They have Universe joining in as well. But he with the full five man. I see Mason with this information will start to get a bit heavier with the pressure that he's applying onto the tier one top. I wonder if the ogre pick in the first phase was really planned. This is like a planned draft. Oh my goodness. What a deny from MSS. MSS. Nine against four girls. Oh, he's gonna get Avalanche. He's got another leap. Yeah, I was gonna say, like, Tiny with Bloodlust is kind of ultra scary. And I, I just wonder if this is a pre planned draft that he's using to pick up both of those. But yeah, they, they wanted to play this tiny. We are going to see a pause from Jimmy. See what's up with the boys on DC. Oh, he's out. All right, time to tag team IX Mike in. <laughs> now, so far, I mean, EG, they're turning it up on that bottom lane. They look to, to be getting a tier two. So we're only, you know, it's pre 10 minutes when they're putting this amount of pressure on. And that's really, that's always going to be worrying, especially when your own draft. You are the, the, the death bomb with that. You, you're expecting to take objectives earlier than the opponent's Well, maybe not right now, because like, I think DP is really strong once she picks up the level of the ultimate. Um, it looks pretty bad for DC right now, but you gotta keep in mind they're the strongest when they're combining Chrono's there with, let's say, an arrow or a Mystic Flare as well as having the DP ult. Yeah, the team fight the is right. the potential to be phenomenal for DC. So I think it's, this is more of EG taking advantage of the fact that DC is not completely online. But DC has a lot more to give in this round, so let's not count them out. Being on the sidelines here, we'll spot him out. Start to defend, so now they're starting back, they're going to look to try and chase him down. Fire Blast to kill him, he's going to the mail. Jumping in, Avalanche going to be off the mark, they'll put down the Dream Cop, but these boys, they don't want to dive deeper. They don't have detection. Ooh, Orb comes in, not going to get it. Zumail had Coil for the longest time, but he didn't want to use it. There's Mason, he's in for an opportunity to get a big chrono on. He is just going to turn for the easier killers, DC boost the round fair. Bring down the Ogre. Tier 1 tower did fall. And somehow did pop the, the Dream Coil underneath the, the usage of the Arcane. So we'll have the ultimate back up in 30 seconds once again. Arteezy looks like the build to be is going to be Treads into the S and Y. Yeah, I think Sumail could have definitely used the Coil a little bit quicker. Because the, the fact that he didn't, they had to chase like right into a Tier 2. And that made it too easy for, for DC to counter him. But they didn't, you know, they only lost because they can fight over, so it's not the biggest deal. Interesting stat there, though, as we saw. Samael actually with just less than a 50% win rate. Being the one that could bring him back to that 50% glory. Let's see if the game really is balanced. Yeah, in my memory, I, I think Samael is much better of a puck player, but... Sure, yeah, it, it strikes you as one of the heroes that he's very flashy. Yeah. The strength of... The, the puck pick for EG is the fact that they have three to four players that can actually play. Um, like uh, Grant pointed out, even Crypt played it, I believe, back in the MDL. Um, yeah, this one right yeah. before the, the TI last year as a support. Radiant are scanning. Zumail on the bottom side, about to get again. Chronosphere is going to be there. Yeah, they have That's the combo. A combo that I feel like we haven't seen in a long time, the Void Skyra. Yeah. But as, as strong as ever. I top lane, no EG. And as soon as EG lose their own mid, they'll take the life of DC's in return. And another tower is taken. 12 minutes in, EG continuing to take the majority of objectives. I feel like both teams on paper are very good at taking objective. I mean, RTZ with the siege damage that he does. Definitely a good tower siege here as well. Go for SM1. I like it. I mean, I, I think this is definitely looking at EG's lineup. They they do want to win this game sooner than later. There's no doubt about that. Having the SMY by Tiny, as you mentioned earlier, just being bloodlusted up by fear. That is a huge amount of pushing potential. It's, a, it's also a huge amount of damage if they have to lock down and control. And as you see, if Samel can find the Dream Coils, that's a fantastic setup for RTZ to move into the center of the wall, land the combo, and get a few hefty swipes out with the trees. Yeah, it's definitely a very different philosophy when you come to playing the tiny, because I think traditionally you always go for a blink dagger first sure. to give yourself the kill potential, but obviously he's not even maxing his avalanche and toss combination, so no point to go for that, and he's going for more of the farm oriented, the more offensive things of right hook. And as we've been saying, you know, obviously having that zero agi uh, innately on the tiny, mm -hmm. these sort of stat items, they, they, they do a lot. Just having any sort of armor 
just steps up, you know, exponentially much greater when the armor's low and you're adding it on for the first time. So, so having that SMY treads the keeler, it's going to make him quite the powerhouse at uh, this sort of 15 minute mark of the game that's coming up. Yeah, one player that I am very concerned for is MSS. You know, I kind of mentioned that Marana farms very slowly. He's in the off lane, and he's gone just like Aquila Bottle. I feel like the pacing of this game is not really favoring MSS. Tiny We're talking about money. Tiny already hitting over hundreds of damage. And not too slow to this game. It really comes down to the pacing of the game. If this game slows down for the boy that Marana to oh, back up, I think the first thing he mentioned coming into this draft is that DC has like four to five points. Yeah, if, if this game, you know, a 60 minute buff, it, it's gonna look quite hard for EG. It feels right. I mean, sure, they, they've always got the split push potential of the Nature's Prophet. And, I mean, late game puck, it, it still be, can be quite the force with the right item build. Have you seen the 25? The I have indeed. I don't, I don't know how good it is. I don't know if it's something we'll get to see in pro play. Because what was the other one? So what's the other option at 24? 420 it's GPM. still the 420 GPM. Yeah, I, I think 420 GPM is almost always selected. But I've seen the rapid fire coil. You could attack out of that coil with the talent, even when you're phased. I mean, it's the, I think that, that's just a meme too far. I don't know, man. They also used to call triple arrow meme. There you go. It's true, mate. Oh, hello, ladies and gentlemen. He gets two of them. He looks to try and bring down to the mail with the silence. They've got enough damage. They'll turn towards fear, take a second target, and get a triple silence there. Good luck Brit for you, Ogre. You're down. Oh, no. Stolen. Does that matter? I don't think I don't think they're fighting too many. With the ghost up, yeah. It's too, too spooky for EG. But so great start for TC. Off the back of that, getting two kills. Moving in on the tower, Koifa takes a tree to the face. We should get this once and still for the time. Nice down. Easy looks for the combo. Doesn't quite find Mason with the avalanche. He's gonna look to continue to chase. Toss and the tree. He's not gonna finish it off. I haven't quite got enough damage. Mason will get up. TP's out. Bobo will be the one to pay the price as Arteezy <laughs> brings him down with his big old branch. So the build as well. Level 10, doesn't take the damage on the Tiny, takes the 20% magic resistance. And I mean, to be fair, that is a lot of magic resistance. Have a level 10, 20%. And especially as we're seeing it against this little lineup, the Mirana, the Skyra. Yeah, I think normally most Tiny players actually take the damage challenge. Yeah, I think this game in particular, he wants to have a greater chance to survive in that first player combination. Very good recognition by me. Chronosphere is pretty much all the setups, of course, with the So even though DC got the objective, the tier one, I think EG's got the bigger one. I just don't like to do it. Why is that nearly level 12? I'm going to tell that off just a bit of time before he has. Because this isn't back online. He's still top of the farm. And SMY yet to cure what he wants next. We were saying, very intrigued to see which part of our team takes this position one time in terms of his iron build. And this is a true position one time. It really is. What we've seen our team play with Smell in the past is more Smell carrying from the mid lane and our TC playing more of a tempo controller. The safe lane. But this game with a hero setup, it's just our TZ. Yeah, he's there right click. I'm just going to go back for the shadow play. As okay. it seems at the moment. That's what he's gonna queue up for. And sure, if he can find an opening onto the back lines to get that star, get over at the beginning of it all, that's gonna be an easy pick. You know? Look at his movement speed with Bloodlust. He's looking at 480. Uh, of course, got a little bit extra of both the. Uh... Dyer are scanning. They've got more than enough burst. He's gone. They'll jump off more. Dream kill from the mail. Catch this too. They try for the TP out. Chrono actually comes through, and it does manage to catch them on the edge of it all. That stolen Chrono from Crit coming to great play. And they set up for a second, and they may even get more Demon. There's a strong out. They're going to have to run. They are going to try and chase Avalanche for the catch. Telekinesis on back. That's going to do it onto Koi, but they've lost the Death Prophet. Oh, wow. And all of a sudden, Eiji goes oh, right up the high ground. They got the Siege unit. This that, tier three. That little play from Crit with the stolen Chronosphere setting up for what has been a glorious fight for Eiji. 
They may just secure them tier three, and maybe even more. There's 30 seconds, no death profit. They gotta respect the void. He's back alive. He's got chrome. And they should disappear here and just yeah. Yeah, they will. They didn't get the tier three, so the shrines are still protected, but still a good amount of damage being done. And the last two engagements have shown us that DC better be damn sure that they're winning the team fight. It's good again here, so great attempt immediately taking Mason out of the fight and as soon as that void's gone they know how aggressive they can play jumping in four more and there we have it crit he holds that now in place does slow down the time until he's able to get out the ultimate it looks like they, they didn't have detection initially he was able to walk it off yeah and he does indeed get the star for the end of the day so it certainly could have been more of a disaster for dc but still overall losing mason and then quite for getting caught out by crit just at the edge, just as it looked like Koifu was going to be able to get himself back to safety. Means that ET will be happier than DC with that series of events. Yeah, DC needs to be extremely careful how they use their team. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. We've seen DC just will bring the fight to you. First of all, Sean gets second in the, the top play. So, DC is walking the very fine line. On the edges, just trying to make sure he gets sufficient because he goes for one extra stack of them. They will get it. Farm is high. Tiny is looking like more like some different nature back this time. Given that uh it feels like he has god strength like every two seconds. Tree grab is a powerful thing. Crit of the moment. Mason is on the lookout. He's got the Chrono, unlikely to want to just pop it for a Rubik. He's going to be looking for bigger things. Spear actually with his Invis ring, getting them a lot of information. Will step underneath the Sentry. They got eyes on him, Mason jumps forward, puts the play, Mansa style, avoiding the Fire Blast opportunity, and they will take down Finn. We're able to grab the Time Warp. So now, now it's like yours complete as well. DC trying to get things together for a push of their own. They have all the ultimates up. But they require to, to make that jump happen with Chrono Nexusism. But as his team's actually backing away, the top lane was beginning to push back into their, to their racks. Yeah, EG made that smoke right under an Observer Wall. Like if can pick up Koifu at the start, that'd be massive. But they're actually Looking to go for it. Straight up, Koifu with the first. Koifu, ooh, he's been alive! Oh, he's, oh, still he's gonna live, and now the Chrono from Mason comes through. They're looking for the turnaround, they've caught the mail, they've caught Arteezy, the mail is down, Artor as well. Double kill for MSS, make that another. Crit tries with the stolen Chrono to get himself out of there, but he's not going to be able to. What a turnaround for DC, and what a save from Jimmy there with the song. It looked like Koifa was dead for sure, but DC, they pull it out of the bag and they hit back hard. That was actually a perfect counterplay. There was a ward right here on the map, and um, it spotted the smoke from the, the Radiant side, so they just actually baited Koifa. Koifa had a hood in the front line, and they know that he's going to survive long enough. Sure, even if he Look had died it. there... I mean, that hood made all the difference. Yeah, What's I don't that? think he even activated it. It didn't, but there's just a little bit of massage uh, resistance in it. And... Oh, and they put... Yeah, okay. I thought the Rubik for a second would, would have killed him there, but... It was so close. Yeah. And just a perfect, perfect turnaround chronosphere from Mason. Turning up the stuff indeed. Yeah, MSF also got a double kill that engagement. That's so gonna he, bump him back up. Yeah, he's actually got a full Aghanim's finish, so oh, whatever dude. I said about him, like, you know, gonna have a very slow ramp up. He did, yeah. and now he's fully online. And now he can farm like an absolute absolute crazy man. Yeah. Here we go, EG's trying for these smoke plays again. They know there's no Chrono, they know there's no Ghost. They're trying to abuse these cooldowns, as you mentioned earlier. DC needs to play defensive. They should understand that if they lose one team fight, they lose top racks, that tier three is already very low. They see Demon on the top lane. I've got eyes on Jimmy. He's got a mech, though. He's gonna be relatively nice. The wrap around from Fear, it should be enough with a good multicast or so. They'll run him down. They've got the gun taking him out. Down. There comes the mech, but with the TPM from Universe, they will find the kill. Jimmy out. Yes. MSS needs to play a little bit of split push for his team. He can quickly push out the way, but here comes EG. And tier three, very, very low. A couple of Shadow snaps from Arto will finish it off as the creeps. Chrono's back up though, in about oh, five seconds. And they used to be like to try and set it up. They get to the D ward. Mason, I get the perfect opportunity. Oh no, he catches Nobody. no one! He catches no one at all! 
And he's actually sprouted up as well. Mason will try and walk out of the sprout. Archie's be able to walk away, but they've lost Bulba. Archie just moves in with the avalanche. Koifer uses himself up, but he is surrounded. Koifer is down. Mason gets tossed back into the clutches of EG. They surround him, fuels him up. Have they got the burst to finish him? Yes, they have from Tomeo. Oh my goodness, never have I seen things fall apart so fast after a failed chrono split. Getting absolutely no one despite the perfect opportunity to set something up as he goes in under cover of Moonlight. And they're just falling apart now. Koifer's back in as quickly as he's back out. Triple kill for Arteezy. I mean, this just might be GG. Uh, it might just be. I mean, that rack is going to be open here. Arteezy's going to take it down very, very quickly. Oh. They can move mid if they want to. Arteezy is quite low, but I don't think they care. They got the urn regenerating him. And yeah, here they come. Already, this looks like it may be game over. EG just like that. One quick misplay from Mason. And EG, you can tell they've got smiles all around. They take the top rack. They move to mid. They'll easily take a second. And then they will back up. But a huge, huge jump forward for EG. 13k lead. Two racks up. The game will go on. But it's got ever so harder now for DC. They lose the shrines as well. Yep. I think EG, if they want to play cool, they wait for the next little challenge, which by the way is spawning bot. The bottom shrine has fallen. I really like the way that EG has drafted an item item. Look over to crit. Normally as a Rubik player, you're looking towards a 4 stack or a wing dagger. Wins for a straight solar crit, which of course plays pretty good defense uh, under the chronosphere for RTZ, but doubles up as an item to further buff that tiny when he's right-clicking on people. And I think Arteezy is sending the curry out to the secret shop soon because he's pretty much got the complete assault caress. This is an incredibly stacked tiny for 25 minutes in. SNY, AC, as we said, Bloodlust. The towers are going to fall in matters of seconds with the damage he can do once he's grabbed a tree. And he is never short of a tree in his hand. Yeah. If he's short of tree, Radiant Prophet can make trees too. Sprout and he just true pick limit. up a tree. Hey. There you go. Pocket strats from EG. Oh, uh, maybe this is the hero that RTZ now is like bonded to. Remember, remember he was sprouted like has been oh, forever, right? Let's just see this. Yeah, he ports out of it. He's just got the chorus now. Remember this one one tournament RTZ got perma sprouted by a prophet. So now he plays the hero that Shadow would never get perma sprouted. Oh, this is once. maybe tiny as the counter against prophet then. There he gets go. sprouted. He just grabs his tree and walks out. Yeah. <laughs> I want to see it. I really do. But I'm just glad we're getting to see Karak Tiny in place as it is. Yeah. RTZ, evil genius as a whole, not afraid to try new things and uh, in, in definitely new ways in this patch. A hero that a lot of people have cited as, as not being great. I mean, understandably, so this is a hero with zero Agi. It literally has one of the three, four stats. But RTZ is making it work and absolutely massively. Jimmy is gone. This attack speed suggests that he's got a lot of Agi. This time, he catches two in the corner. It's a new high score for Mason. Can they do anything off the back of it? They move forward with the exorcism. They are. They're getting rat to tap tally by Universe. MSK is trying to jump away. Fears with the chase now. So now, we'll get enough damage out onto him. Mason is just dying here. He does get the time walk off. Will survive. They did kill Arteezy. Universe, a bit. I mean, they weren't winning that fight, and they were losing the bot rack. You know? mm -hmm. Do you think they're tilted? Do I think we know they're tilted. Loom, look at that loss. Ooh. But Evil Genius is looking very good. The RTZ Tiny, they had a plan, they executed it. DC, a, f a few unfortunate mistakes, and uh, just too much for them to come back from. Yeah, we, we saw the difference.